Okay, good evening everybody and welcome to the Eagles Community Arena for tonight's BBL Group 3 clash between the hometown Newcastle Eagles sponsored by Give to Local and the B-Brown Sheffield Sharks from obviously Sheffield. Um, before we get into team introductions and chat about the game with Dave, um, I believe we have some coaches interviews lined up starting off with the Tiva Lions. Coach Lyons, welcome back to the Eagles Community Arena. Of course, not the first COVID kind of game we've had here with uh, you at the sideline, but uh, quite a little while since that game and uh, lots of chances for you to run your players out since then. How has it been in the uh, run-up to uh, getting into the BBL Cup? Um, it's been good. I think we've had uh, some good tests. We've uh, played in the road quite a bit, so we've had some uh, different venues to play in. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, it's good to come back around full circle today. Obviously, uh, our Eagles uh, didn't get the win against uh, Leicester Riders in their last game here on Friday. Mm. Uh, tricky to play, obviously, the games in such a packed schedule. Do you think that might affect the performance tonight? Uh, well, you know, it's always going to play a part to any team playing that many games, but uh, I think we're ready for it and we're built for it. What was your takeaway from the last time you played uh, Eagles, obviously, here in that preseason game? Uh, you know, very um, dynamic team, get out and, and transition really well. Um, fast tempo and can uh, spread the floor with shooting. Wish you the best of luck tonight. Thanks, Coach. Cheers. Thanks, Welcome man. back to the ECA, Coach. So, we had a game of basketball ahead tonight. Looking forward to it. What has changed with everything that went on against Leicester last time out? Uh, I think we've made a few adjustments, particularly defensively. Um, but I think what you'll see tonight is two teams coming off a loss, got something to prove. So, I think it's going to be a very close game right to the end. Sharks, obviously, we played here at the ECA in pre season. What have you taken from that game and the games that you've seen of theirs over recent weeks? I think the preseason game means pretty much nothing at this point. It was eight weeks ago. Both teams have evolved since then. Um, they've only played a couple of games, you know, in the cup. They, they, you know, everyone else has played at least three. So I think you're going to see a bounce back game from both teams. It's going to be very competitive, and I expect a very hard game tonight. Best of luck today, coach. Thank you very much. Okay, so that's the, the thought of tonight's two head coaches. Um, and what they think how they're going to approach the game and what they think may well happen in the game but let's get to the most important people Dave and myself <laughs> with our opinions because the, we're the ones that you're going to be listening to so we're going to start with the Sheffield team and uh, both these teams played obviously at the Eagles community arena way back in September seven, I think it was about seven weeks ago um, pre-season game and both teams are actually unchanged from that the roster is exactly the same so if we look at the Sheffield uh, roster, uh, roster I'll just run down it we have number zero Nicholas Lewis number one Oscar Baldwin number four Nate Montgomery number five Jody Campbell number seven Kipper Nichols number 11 Callum Jones number 15 Mike Tuck number 22 Antoine Lillard number 25 Bennett Cook Number 30, Robert Marsden, and number two, Mackie McKnight. Your thoughts about Sheffield, Dave? Um, well, I think that, uh, you know, we didn't see the real Sharks in pre-season because uh, key, obviously looking at the stats from the recent games, two of the key players are going to be uh, Lillard and, and his American sidekick. And uh, Kipper poor, poor, had, had even played five minutes in that pre-season game before he had three fouls. I think if the, the Sharks are going to be a factor tonight, I think that we've got to have a big game from Bennett Cook. Sometimes he plays great against the Eagles, sometimes you feel like he, he isn't really uh, getting out of the game what he needs. Um, and I think that uh, you know we could have a, a the, they've split with London, so obviously they're not that easy to beat. And the Eagles, the usual lineup, number zero, Great Britain's Rex Fluger. Number two, Evan Maxwell. Number four, Temba Yubantu. Number six, Cortez Edwards. Number nine, Sauvé Kande. Number 12, Louis Sears. Number 13, Darius Defoe. Number 16, Eddie Matthew. Number 21, Drew Lasker. Number 24, Justin Gordon. And number 44, Ramon Fletcher. And obviously, Eagles coming into this game on the back of a, a loss to, to London. Uh, sorry, to Leicester. And Shark on the back of a loss to, to London. So both teams really need to win this game, don't they, Dave? Yeah, well, I mean, the Eagles, as you say, lost to Leicester, but I mean, I think we, we acknowledged on the night, and I acknowledge now that the riders were pretty impressive for, for this early in the season, and if we needed any more thoughts about their forms, and they had an emphatic 21-point victory over the Lions at the weekend. 
I mean, looking back, I think there were some good things from, from last night's game, from the Eagles' point of view, particularly impressed with Rex Fluger, particularly in the second half. I see him fitting more and more into his role. He gives them lots of energy, uh, and also that is, is, a, is a threat from outside. Terrific spell of defence in the third quarter. I was a little, and that was in particular, it was Darius DeFore, Drew Lasker and Rex. I was a little bit disappointed when, for whatever the circumstances were, Coach McLeod had to uh, split that trio up and take them out of the game for rest. I didn't think the Eagles recovered that type of defence again. They have shown a willingness um, to share the ball this season so far, a lot more ball movement. But I think probably the three key things tonight is they've got to defend the paint better. Uh, they've got to keep people like Justin Gordon or Ramon Fletcher out of foul trouble. I think the foul trouble, early foul trouble for Gordon, the technical foul and then the incident straight after it meant that Fletcher really was not a factor at all in the second half. And I think they've got to benefit more from uh, an inside-outside game. Good thoughts, Dave, and not one of them I would disagree with. Um, just looking at the starting fives, pretty much as we expected. Um, the Sheffield Sharks start with uh, number zero Nicholas Lewis, number 22 Antoine Lillard, number 25 Bennett Cook, number 30 Rob Marsden and number 92 Mackie McKnight which means obviously Kip Mickle will be coming off the bench which is, has been the way for Sheffield so far. The Eagles starting with the backcourt of number six Cortez Edwards and 44 Ramon Fletcher and we have number zero Rex Fluger, number 24 Justin Gordon and the centre is number two Evan Maxwell. Um, just before as we get underway, we're just about to get underway, we take the knee. That's a knee taken and we'll get up. And I just want to apologise to both Sheffield Sharks, the Sheffield Sharks fans and organisation and Bennett Cook himself because for some reason I completely forgot his name was Cook last, last time we were here. But we definitely know it is Cook, and I uh, do apologise for getting that wrong the last time, but hopefully I'll get it right tonight. And it's Sharks, it, it was actually Cook who won the tip off, and it's Sharks for the first offence. Rex Flugler getting in there with hands, stopping that pass, getting to Antoine Lillard. He has Nicholas Lewis up for two. That one's just off. Lewis has had a pretty slow start to the season, Dave, only averaging four and a half points a game. sure what happened there shot clock didn't start I think. yeah shot clock didn't start yeah I, I mean th there's quite if you're looking at the stats of the Sheffield there's no but you know there's quite a few people probably need to step up and help to get some points on the board and Lewis is clearly one of those only averaging four and a half points in the first two games and we know he's nearly always a double figure scorer here's the Eagles with Fletcher finding Gordon they'd hope to get Gordon into the game a bit earlier than they did on Friday Gordon facing against Marsden yeah, and probably, probably the same with Cortez Edwards as well. It looks like he's right in the game right now. Yep, and yep. Edwards answers Dave's call and answers Coach McLeod's call and knocks the first points of the game down. Lovely jumper from the free throw line. Eagles lead 2-0. to zero. He has Lillard. Marsden, good hands by Edwards, but Lewis as well to keep a, keep a handle on that. He gives it to Cook, who thinks about going against Maxwell. Does go against Maxwell. Misses the shot. But there's the first foul on Maxwell, and this is one of the problems he had on Friday. Not necessarily the fouls, but wrong defensive position. Well, that's what I'm saying. They've got to defend the paint better, and I, I guess I'll qualify that a little bit more by saying perhaps it's, it's particularly in post-up defence. So Cook to the line for the shoot two. Takes the first. I mean, let's not forget that um, first game against the Lions. I mean, Maxwell got himself in real foul trouble and basically played no part at all in the second half of that game. And that was after having a really good first half as well. Cook makes both from the line, very reliable from the line. And the Eagles get the ball into the hands of Ramon Fletcher, guarded by Marty McKnight, which we'll expect to see pretty much all night. He has Fluger. Big impact Rex Fluger's made on the Eagles so far. But that was... Uh, yeah, it, it did seem that, I mean, I've seen players miss passes before, uh, but not by that much. Yeah, but the the trajectory of his hand in going downwards suggested that that was definitely a tip. And there's Gordon getting inside from Fletcher's pass, and he lays his first points into the night. Eagles lead 4-2. to two. And from a coaching point of view, as you pointed out the other night, he's terrific at going to the basket on his right hand and finishing off with his left. Yeah, just out, out, out of balance. 
Yes, Maxwell and Cook again. Cook turning. Maxwell is very lucky he didn't yeah, get his second it, foul there. It was interesting, wasn't it? Because the whole of the Sheffield bench was up there looking for that foul. A oh, lovely pass from Cortez Edwards inside to Maxwell. Maxwell lays it in off the glass. Eagles lead 6-2. to two. Well, we wanted a better start from Edwards and Gordon, and so far we've absolutely definitely got it from Edwards, and I think we're going to get one from Gordon as well. Here's Lewis. Cook setting the screen. Lewis for three. That's way off against... Nice pass from Ramon Fletcher, and there's a real nice dunk from Justin Gordon on the break. Eagles up 8-2. to two. Well, before we get too excited at this great start by the Eagles, Jeff, let's just remind everybody the results between these two teams over the last two seasons. Yeah, the, the Sharks have very much had the Eagles' number um, in, in all the competitions after the Eagles had a long stretch where they beat them quite a lot. Um, I did have those stats to... I yeah. handed me previous notes, but I haven't got them in this one notes yeah, for some well, reason. If, if there was ever a camera on me there, they'd see my putting my arms in the air display at that call from the official. The call being on Justin Gordon. The it Lord, wasn't even worth a blow. The Lord drive into the basket and then flicks it out. But unfortunately, Rob Morrison's not seven foot eight and he can't reach that pass. Yeah, you know, coaches talk to each other, Jeff, and, and clearly... The, the thing is, take it in on Maxwell. No doubt, no question in my mind at all that that's one of the things that we're going to be faced with this year. So he's really got to work on improving his positional play when he's guarding players without the ball and adjusting it quickly when they get the ball. Edwards' his three-point shot is well off. Lewis pushing the ball hard. Gives it to Marsden. Marsden's going to drive inside. Nice float on in for two points. Nice move by Rob Marsden. Eagles straight back into the stride, though. Fletcher, Edwards, Maxwell, across to Fletcher. Ball movement, but not necessarily the tidiest ball movement. Here's Maxwell thought about in the three, gives it back to Fletcher. Fletcher turns the corner, drives through the middle. Doesn't make the basket, but I think that's going to be a foul. Foul on zero, Nick Lewis. As Fletcher went to the basket, he'll shoot two. Yeah, well, terrific drive there. Sheffield presenting with pretty much his basic straight line drive. And what I think would like to see the Eagles concentrating on is what they're doing off the ball when Fletcher's on his, on his drive to basket. Early substitution. And obviously going back to Sheffield's last offence, that was an easy two for, Matt, for Rob Marsden. And I'll repeat what I've said a million times in commentary. You take Rob Marsden for granted at your peril. Fletcher makes the first. Kipper Nichols has come on for Nicholas Lewis. Almost my second apology. I called Nicholas Lewis Nick Lewis, but I think it's very hard not to remember. He's always been Nick Lewis, but this year he's, he's asked to be called Nicholas Lewis. I'm going to call him Lewis. <laughs> Two from the line for Fletcher gives the Eagles 10 to 4 lead early on. There's McKnight back to Marsden. Cook battling inside with Maxwell. Nichols gives it to Marsden. That's going to be an offensive foul. Called on Marsden. We've seen a lot of offensive fouls called so far. We've obviously seen some kind of new regulation or at least new directive. I don't think it's right, new reg regulation. Probably my fault for not reading Faber's update on the rules. It always happens in Olympic year, doesn't it? But of course, this year the Olympics are suspended until next year. Mm. Eagles on the attack. Gordon, that's a poor pass. Knocked away by McKnight. Picked up by Lillard. He's going to drive all the way to the basket. Pushes Gordon out the road. Rob Morrison tries to get up there, but he's blocked by Evan Maxwell. Ball's recycled, though, by Sheffield. Eight on the shot clock. McKnight up for two and in for two over Fletcher. Nice play from Mackie McKnight. Fletcher, that was a dangerous pass. That was a very dangerous pass from Fletcher, but Fluger got there and felt the full force of Kipper Nichols as he turned. Fortunately for Nichols, that's a foul on him because he was going for the ball. I think it do, I think it shows the intent of the Eagles when they do take possession of the ball, to wanting to get into transition quickly. I think it can be a big weapon for this year. What was needed against Leicester was to know when that wasn't on and have a little bit more structure for handling that type of defence that Leicester played. I think as well what you have to look at, the difference between the two sides is, is, is Leicester defence was probably a little bit you know more in tune with what the Eagles were going to do 
I think the Eagles do feel they can run a game to the Sheffield tide. Flugas had to come off after that unfortunate collision. Louis Sears has come on in his place. Fletcher will inbound to Gordon. Back to Fletcher. Three fouls on Sheffield. So far in this quarter. Fletcher looking to go in between. And then finds Cortez Edwards, who finds Evan Maxwell, but his shot's off. Edwards takes a great offensive rebound. Sears drives in, back out to Edwards. But Edwards' bounce pass goes astray. Yeah, I think he was anticipating the back cut there. Louis Sears was overplayed. Obviously, defender knows the danger of Sears from three-point line. Good de defence by the Sheffield player, overplaying Sears. Sears should have made that back cut. McKnight, Lillard, always seems to be somebody on Lillard very early on. He has Bennett Cook, good catch because that ball was thrown hard by Lillard. Lillard up for three and in for three. Cook just Gordon not necessarily getting a hand up. That brings Sheffield back to within a point at 10 to 9. Edwards going in hard, loses the handle. Lillard knocks it out. The Eagles end line ball. 4.57 left in the first quarter. Eagles lead by 10 to 9. Will be a substitution. Nicholas Lewis back on. Bennett Cook comes out. Sheffield going is slightly smaller. Fletcher at the end line. Looking for Gordon. Gets Gordon. He's isolated one on one with Rob Morrison. Thought about going for it. Now has gone for it, turns, shoots off the rim. Good rebound taken by Kipper Nichols. So Lillard and Nichols both on together now. And as Dave mentioned, the other two that have been really doing it so far for Sheffield. Nice pass from McKnight out to Lewis. Lewis shakes and bakes against Louis Sears and knocks down a long two. And Sheffield. From being 10-4 down or on a 7-0 run and take the lead 11-10. Nice shot from Lewis. Yeah, I think uh, Coach McLeod's got to respond here with either a timeout or a change of players. Evan Maxwell's floater is too hard. Comes back down, Sheffield again. This time there on a quick break and Lewis up for two points. Nope, misses it and Justin Gordon takes the rebound. That's Nick Lewis for you. Tries the hardest thing. The easiest thing in the world there was to flick it off to the guy who was standing unmarked under the basket. It's another one missed from Gordon. Great offensive pass from Ramon Fletcher, but Gordon couldn't make the two. Lillard driving inside, but he's stopped by Cortez Edwards. Some good defence being played here at the moment, David. Not necessarily a, a lot of good offence. Fletcher with the circus shot, doesn't make it, but Cortez Edwards there for the offensive rebound and put back, and the Eagles go back in front by 12 to 11. Yeah, I mean, when the Eagles were 8-2 up, that was reflecting the way the game was being played. I don't know whether the Eagles have switched off or Sharks have just decided to get their act together, but certainly it's been a better performance from the Sharks in the second half of this first quarter. And again, Marsden twisting and turning, pushing Maxwell around in the, in the paint and lays it in for two. Sheffield up by one at 13 12. Maxwell for three, in it goes. That's certainly one thing you can't do this season is leave Evan Maxwell free at the top of the game. Well, he's more comfortable, isn't he, playing yeah. a, a sort of stretch four role rather than being a true postman. Oh, great steal from Ramon Fletcher off Mackie McKnight, and he's in through straight quickly. Cortez Edwards back to Evan Maxwell for the slam. That gives the Eagles a 17 to 13 lead. Maxwell, his reward for that dunk is to come out, as is Justin Gordon, and we see Darius Defoe and Eddie Matthew for the first time. And there was a few people asking why Eddie didn't get any minutes on Friday. And apparently, he wasn't very well, although he was suited up. Okay. Um, and it was decided that it was probably best he didn't play. Especially with the type of team Leicester were putting on the floor. Callum Jones also comes on. Mackie McKnight takes a seat. Mike Tuck comes on as well. So I think this is the importance. Now we'll see, hopefully see the importance to uh, the Sharks of this signing because Mackie McKnight is clearly going to need some rest during games. Nicholas and there's a man who can hard. come on and run the show for them. It's an in-low to Mike Tuck, immediately guarded by Darius Defoe. 
Well, well played by Mike Tuck, but he couldn't make the basket. He did manage to get round Darius Defoe, did a good job of that, but couldn't lay it in, and Defoe came up with a rebound. You wonder how many times Defoe and Tuck have taken on each other over the years. There's nice work, footwork by Darius Defoe, gets the hometown roll, and in it goes, and Eagles back in the ascendancy, 19 to 13. Well, and turned that match up. It was a good move by Mike Tuck, but it was also a good defence by Darius Defoe. Never for one second did he give up on his task. Kipper Nichols can't make it. Mike Tuck tries to push it in, can't get it. Eddie, Mac, Eddie Matthew takes a rebound. Cortez Edwards flying at the other end of the court. Silky smooth move. Sorry, Ramon Fletcher. Certainly when the outlet goes... I mean, we're used to the outlet going to Ramon Fletcher and him setting up and looking at uh, who's filling the lanes. But when Fletcher doesn't get the outlet, he fills the lanes really well. And that was... Uh, Terrific move straight down the heart of the uh, Sheffield Sharks defence. And one as well. Certainly, certainly the Eagles have perked up since the moment they went behind a couple of minutes ago. And from nowhere they've swung this round from a two-point deficit to a, what is it, a seven-point, eight-point lead now. Yeah, and Fletcher have the chance to make it a nine-point lead. Knocks the free throw in. And I think he'll get a rest as Drew Laska comes out. Gives him the last 149 of the quarter for Drew to play and Fletcher gets an extra little bit of rest at the end of the quarter with the Eagles up by nine. So Callum Jones brings it forward. As Dave says, filling in for McKnight. To four on Cook, tough. He has Tuck with Sears. Jody Campbell's also now on the court. Nice pass back out. Nice step back by May Tuck, but he can't make the three. Drew Laska's first involvement to take a rebound. Eddie Matthew finds Darius to four. To four turned and oh, that's a nice pass from Darius to four. Really nice pass and a good cut from Eddie Matthew to the basket and he's fouled as he goes to the basket. Excellent cut from Matthews. He saw Eddie looked up, he saw his defender has turned his head, lost vision on him. Great back cut. Matthew to the line for two. Makes the first. We're so used to seeing Eddie spot up on the, on the three. Back cut to basket. I think it's a, two things there. To increase confidence from Eddie himself and obviously the confidence that Coach McLeod's got in to put him in in the first quarter. And the team alliance takes a time out and uh, we'll go to adverts. Uh, Eagles only on two fouls, Sheffield on the five. Inbound from Tuck to Jones. Jones brings it over the timeline. Tuck sets the screen. Nice backdoor. Nice, nice backdoor pass and cut, but unfortunately for, the, for Sheffield, Drew Lasker was well awake to it. He has Louis Sears from the corner. And that, that three shooting it at 50% at the moment. And that's just taking his percentage down a little bit. Callum Jones for two. Almost automatic from the elbow, I think, Callum Jones. Something that Sheffield will want to see a lot more of. I'd like to see him, to, over the years when I've watched him, there's far too often he's got himself in that position and not taken that wide open shot. That's when I said he was automatic from there. I, that's, that's my agreement with you, dear, really. I think it's very strange. Yes, to four for three. That one's off. Nichols takes a rebound. Jones, once again, a chance for Sheffield to cut the gap. Yes, Jody Campbell. Nice pass to Mike Tuck. Mike Tuck, too strong. Darius Defoe takes the rebound. Eddie Matthew brings it over halfway. Just 10 seconds left on the clock in the first quarter. Yes, Edwards. Yes, a quick look at the clock. Eagles bench telling Edwards how much he's got left. Doesn't make the shot on the buzzer. Ends the first quarter. Eagles lead 24 to 15. Yeah, what's interesting there is Cortez looked at the, looked at the big scoreboard because of where he was on the court. I don't think he had a clear view of where the 24 second clock are counting down to. So that's the first quarter over and done. 24-15 to the Eagles. 
nice start from them. Sheffield came back well, and then the Eagles pulled away towards the end of the quarter. Lead no scorers is Evan Maxwell with seven points. Cortez Edwards has four. Justin Gordon has four, and Ramon Fletcher has five. Ramon Fletcher already with four assists as well. For Sheffield, lead no scorers is Rob Marsden with four. And then Antoine Lord with that three-pointer that he hit. Rob Mosen also got three rebounds. Leads the rebounds. So one of the things I did notice, Dave, is uh, Atiba Lions was some people in a lot more regularly than, than the Eagles. The Eagles seem to have almost a set way of they're going to do their, their people, but whereas Nick Lewis was in and out about three or four times. Yeah, from the Eagles' point of view, it's, it's disappointing that uh, Rex Fluger had to be taken out of the game so early, but uh, hopefully he's, he's OK and uh, he's going to be able to play a role in this game. I see the, the staff are still uh, monitoring him and how he goes. Um, it really should be this comfortable for the Eagles. The, the the defense is doing a good job. Sharks are not getting any easy open looks. Sharks at the moment are really finding the right way to attack this defense, and the Eagles certainly look dangerous in transition. As Fletcher gets us underway in the second half. He's come back on for Cortez Edwards. Gives Drew Lasker turn in the corner. Gives it to Fletcher. Darius Defoe sets the screen, and Fletcher drives all the way to the basket. And there's that left-handed layup. And it, we also often say, don't we, we know what's coming, but it's still <laughs> very hard to stop. Yeah, it, I mean, it, most people just follow the ball. If you followed the ball there, what you saw was a great move from Ron Fletcher. But actually, if you had overall vision, that was a terrific team effort to create that basket. That's the multiple a... cross cuts opened up that drive for Ramon Fletcher. So I'm, I'm just, uh, just get, I can't hear you. Sorry for that, uh, viewers, listeners. Uh, just just need a slight change on the uh, the, the volume because I couldn't quite couldn't hear Dave from there. Sheffield worked that free to Mike Tuck. And Mike Tuck, as he's done for years and years and years, knocks down a three from the side. Brings Sheffield back to within eight. Nice ball movement from the Eagles. Lasker though finds Sears inside. And that's going to be a oh, oh. call, call for a travel. I think you're always going to travel if you're pushed in the back. Yeah, and I think back to that um, last offence, it's great that Mike Tuck knocked down that shot because the Eagles are not giving uh, Sheffield any room at all inside the paint, so they need somebody to stretch out the defence. And we were talking before the game as well, and, you know, early season statistics are, you know, often misleading, but we, we were saying that one or two of the shocks looked as if that had to step up, and one of those was, was Bennett Cook, and uh, he's having a real tough time tonight so far. He has Kipper Nichols, though, he goes hard to the basket. And then puts in up Florida, and that was a nice bit, bit of play by Nichols. And suddenly they're back within six. First yeah. two baskets of the yeah. order. Callum Jones has got to read this a little bit better because he's, he came off that screen there and penetrated to the middle. Ramon Fletcher just stood and watched him, knowing that Callum wasn't even going to look at the basket. He had a wide, wide open look at the basket. Nice play from Fletcher to get Defoe free, but Defoe couldn't knock down the two. He has Jones for Sheffield. Up to the elbow into Cook. Cook's going to go hard against Maxwell. Did go hard against Maxwell, but couldn't make the shot. And Maxwell comes away with the rebound. And that's going to be a foul by Callum Jones. And Callum knew he was in trouble and he tried to get his feet sorted out, didn't he, Dave? But unfortunately, he just couldn't get them. Out. Yeah. That innocent look on his face as he got <laughs> up. I'd like to see the Eagles repeat in the sort of, but here we go, look, nice movements off the ball, more than one player involved, multi-cutting. Fletcher, Lasker, Matthew from the corner, in and out, Cook takes the rebound, gives it to Jones. Jones across to Campbell, Campbell, nice move on Matthew, nice pass back to Cook, Cook's going to do from the free throw line, can't make it, Drew Lasker with another rebound. He pushes it to Eddie Matthew. He finds Fletcher. Fletcher goes through the middle and he might get a continuation. No. Nope. Foul's given on the floor. Well, we've got one referee 
signal in the basket yeah. and the other one signaling foul on the floor. So the foul on the floor looks as though it's, it's one. the right decision. Defoe and Matthew come out. Gordon and Edwards back in. Massive substitutions for Sheffield. Lewis Lidard and Marsden back on. Took Nichols and Jones off. McKnight on as well. Just from Gordon to Edwards. Edwards finds Lasker who drives hard across the, the, the key. We can't lay it up against Lord. Good good defense by Antoine Lord there on Drew Lasker. McKnight finds Cook. Cook flying as well. You know, is it, referees are certainly letting the players play. Cortez Edwards, that's a fantastic move. He goes coast to coast. Cortez Edwards goes coast to coast. And uh, and as he made that layup, referee Bo teed up Bennett Cook, who's been taken out of the firing line after Cook thought he should have had a foul. Not sure that some of the players know what's happened, but it should be a free throw for, it, for the Eagles for the technical foul on Bennett Cook. Fletcher makes the free throw. Now Sheffield will get end line ball. Mackie McKnight now bringing the ball forward. Sheffield down by nine, 29 20. That night weaving in and out, weaving, wow. <laughs> There's Nichols for three, that hits the front of the rim. Oh, Drew Laska manages somehow to get the rebound and, and knock it straight into the hands of Nicholas Lewis. But Marsden's shot is short. Drew Laska coming away with the ball. That's a, good, that's a late call, but it's a call. Fouls on 22, I think, Lenard. Nope. Is it? Yeah, Anton Lenard. And, an, and I think it's another technical, this time on Nicholas Lewis. I think that technical's on Matt Knight. Yeah, I think, yeah. Well, it can't be on Matt Knight, he's not on the floor. Oh, he is, yeah. 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 Not for long, he's walking the whole walk, the whole walk away, so Fletcher had to shoot the first one, makes the first one. And the ball goes, I think it... End line to the Eagles. Or side line to the Eagles for the first foul. Table and referees confer. So yeah, so just to just to get that right, uh, my apologies. The, the technical foul was on Mackie McKnight, and there was also a foul on uh, Antoine Lillard, which is why the Eagles have got the ball back after the free throw that Fletcher made. And they now lead by 10. Energy again from Drew Lasker, but he couldn't gather that one in after just Justin Gordon's left-handed hook shot was short. I talked before about the need for the Eagles to develop an inside-outside game, and one of the reasons for that is to create better spacing. They really lost all track of spacing on that last offence. So the Lord tries to turn on Lasker, and he does well to get position lays it in for two Sheffield bench very vociferous yes Cortez Edwards goes in lays it in with his left hand Edwards having a good game 32 22 Eagles lead 6 or 7 to go in the half yes Lewis to Marsden Marsden into Lillard and I think he probably fancies his chances of going against Lasker again but he doesn't Edwards almost gets the ball away, but Lewis comes up with it and he puts up the three. That one's off and an easy rebound for big Evan Maxwell and he'll, he's going to play point guard. <laughs> Probably ill-advised as he loses the handle. Lewis to Nichols. Nichols doesn't make, doesn't make the layup and uh, Atiba Lions head in hands. I don't know whether he's frustrated with decisions or he's frustrated by the fact that his team... You know, they're setting up okay, they're keeping decent spacing, lots of good movement, they're just not finishing. So Eagles lead 32 to 22, time out, and we're off to adverts.
That was an Eagles time out, Dave. And ten point lead. Do you think that's just because the last couple of offences were a little bit slack? It, it is an Eagles time out, and I think it's very remiss of me not to wish the assistant coach a happy birthday today. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday to Mark Eldigan, yes. Um, yeah, no, I mean, the Eagles, Eagles are definitely the better team in this game. Um, Sharks start really struggling to score points, I think, is the big the big issue Latiba's facing there. And that's probably what his frustration was. Nice drive, straight line drive on the right-hand side. Ball didn't even go, didn't even go above the ring. He's, they've got to turn the movement and the situations they create, and they've got to finish them. Shooting at 34% at the moment, whereas the Eagles are up at 48%. Ten-point difference. Yeah, you know, massive uh, difference. Yeah, that, uh, you know, you can see where the difference is there. As you say, I'm not sure as well. He, he possibly thought he had a, a case for a foul as well, and possibly so maybe he made a double frustration. But uh, they have got the ball, um, sideline ball, so Mac Knight will put it in. Into Lillard, he's faced by Edwards. To Nichols, Nichols to McKnight, back to Nichols. Lillard, he thought about the three, gives it back to Nichols, back to McKnight. McKnight puts the three up. What I thought was interesting there, Dave, there was plenty of ball movement, but not a lot of player movement. Yes, Edwards once again going in strong to the basket. Can't make it though, Kipper Nichols comes up with the rebound. And they had decent looks on almost every pass, and nobody wanted to take responsibility for firing the, pulling the trigger. And uh, Kipper Nichols passed the ball away. Rob Morrison had been, but Rob Morrison had just moved away. Just a little bit disjointed both yeah. sides at the moment on offence, which is reflected in the fact that some hasn't nobody scored for a while. Yes, Edwards brings the ball over halfway. Louis Sears to Gordon. Gordon to Edwards. Fletcher cuts into the middle. Maxwell comes out. Courtless Edwards thinks we're trying to go through a gap. There's not one there. Gives it out to Justin Gordon. Justin Gordon for three. And Justin Gordon knocks down the three. And the team alliance decides that's enough for me to have a timeout. I like that. I like that shot. Gordon, the nobody even. You have to keep an eye on our two, uh, our two technical. Yeah, so we've got 4.39 to go. Eagles lead 35 to 22. And uh, Antoine Lillard getting very um, demonstrative in the, in the time out there. Clap and tell everybody, come on, let's go. Well, that's what they need. They really do need to fire themselves up more. They're playing really passive. I mean, in terms of that last off, and also def it's affecting the defence. If you looked up at that last offence, Eagles didn't need any movement off the ball. That cross court pass went straight to Justin Gordon and he knew as the ball was on his way, his guy wasn't closing down or challenging his three-point shot. And again, I, t I talked about statistics in early season. Eagles have only played three games, but Justin Gordon's knocking the three down at over 60% at the moment. So well, well, if you know that, then Sharks should know that. Yeah. And, and, and everybody knows you've got to patrol the three-point line, you've got to close down the shooters and you've got to challenge the shots. And as you say at the moment, the Sharks not quite doing that and... Uh, it's all about the three, the C's, Jeff. Close down, challenge, and then if if they do want to uh, not take the shot, then you've got to be able to contain the dribbler. Mike Knight let that ball roll a long, long way, and the Eagles were happy for it to roll that far before he picked it up. Finds Bennett Cook. Bennett Cook, nice first step. And that's going to be a foul on Evan Maxwell, yeah. Well, Bennett is clearly not comfortable facing the basket and wanting to put the simple shot up because Maxwell never moved. Evan Maxwell's second foul, only Eagle in, in, in the two fouls. Sheffield in the penalty again, uh, as they were in the first quarter, but a lot longer than left to go, 4.28 to go. But it's the Eagles foul by Maxwell like on Cook, who gives Bennett Cook the chance to two free throws. Misses the first. Well, we know for certain if Cook gets the ball in that same position as Darius DeFore won't give him any room. Cook makes the second. Guy can shoot like that from the free throw line. To me, he's got to be taking those sort of nine, eight, nine, ten foot shots. 
caught it, it flash to the basket and it basically disappeared from the, the, the point where Justin Gordon was going to be. Oh, lots of ball moving, but that's a great block there, twice. Well, first one was a great block by Lillard, second one he was a little bit unlucky, but that probably was a foul. You spotted Lillard in that timeout, that that's what they needed, they needed somebody to put some energy, that defence had energy. Yeah, because Eagles were moving the ball on quite a lot, but Sheffield went with them all the way. We can talk about angles, we can talk about positional play, first rule of defence is energy, intensity, and build on that. At the line. It's almost as though Sharks at the moment aren't quite sure of their identity. Whether well, they want to look back at the history against the Eagles over the last two years, they've no need at all to fear this team. Four makes the second. Interesting. See which way Sheffield come back. Lewis almost doesn't pick the ball up cleanly. Neither does Lillard, but he turns the corner and he's going to go against Justin Gordon. Drives in hard, but doesn't make the shot. And I think this time it's going to be a foul. Fouls on Darius Defoe. Yeah, I think Lillard feels that Darius got away with one before the one that was actually called. Yeah. I mean, it's good that Lillard's bringing this energy to the team because hopefully he sparks his teammates. They're going to need that spark down 13 at the moment, 36 to 23. Just keep a Nichols up for two, doesn't go in. Fletcher takes the rebound, gives it to Edwards. Back to Fletcher. Fletcher thought about the three. Now setting it up at the top of the key. Defoe comes to help him out. Fletcher turns the corner and goes a long way. This time he gets the ball in the air, and that's going to be a foul on Kipper Nichols. Sheffield, as we said before, in the penalty. Well, it's a lot better position for Nichols to be in, to be picking up your second with only three to go in a half, rather than picking up your third with only five minutes gone, as he did in that pre-season game. Two from Fletcher, takes him into double figures. First player to get into double figures. Callum Jones comes on, or Kipper Nichols. Tiva Lyons not one to risk a third foul. Having said that, he's got a few players on two fouls at the moment. It's Callum Jones has come on in his place and he's taken the ball at the point. Nice pass from McKnight to Lewis. Lewis is going to attack the basket. Nice pass inside to Callum Jones, but he's got nowhere to go. Great defence from the Eagles. The Lord should have took that three, really. Didn't. Gives it to Lewis. Lewis takes a bounce and his three points are short. And Darius Defoe gives the ball straight away to Bennett Cook. Bennett Cook drives in. That's too strong as well. Louis Sears picks up the rebound. Fletcher behind the back, over halfway. Finds Gordon in the corner. Fletcher for three. It's the front of the rim. McKnight takes the rebound. Quarterback pass to Lillard. Lillard to Lewis, but Lewis comes out rather than go up. And he's now he's going to drive in hard. Fletcher strips him. And the Eagles are off and running again. Fletcher on McKnight, Fletcher lays it in for two. <laughs> Fletcher's taking a hard tumble on the knee. He's holding his knee, yeah. yeah. Fletcher up to 13 points first though. That's two rebounds and five assists as well. He's going to take a seat on the bench and Eddie Matthews come on in place. Moves Cortez Edwards to the point. I mean, hopefully on behalf of part of the Eagles that Edwards is equally as comfortable uh, at point as he is off the ball. Yeah. 
I think it's the biggest hope for the Eagles. There's no damage to Ramon Fletcher. Yeah. Medical team on him. Rex yeah. Fluger looks as if he's uh, still suffering a little bit. He's, so he's just sitting in the stand there with his uh, covering yeah. over his face. I mean, Fletcher was naturally concentrating on making sure he was laying that ball in, but I think he did a got a little bit of a nudge in the back. It's Mark Knight. That's a nice drive to the basket by Mackie McKnight. He lays it in for two. Edwards, as we thought, takes over the point. Justin Gordon directing the traffic for the Eagles. Sayers comes away. Edwards to Matthew. Matthew drives inside. Is he going to go all the way? Well, he's going to try. <laughs> <laughs> and he got away with it as well. <laughs> yeah, and then he got... That's twice I Eddie Matthews. That's going to be a foul by Eddie. Foul by Eddie Matthew. Looks like the infection... An infusion of energy from Lillard is now spread to Mackay, which is good. Matt Knight, sorry, which is good. Well, it's 40 to 25, Sheffield, and 153 to go. Sheffield do need an injection of something. Darius Defoe takes a seat. Drew Lasker comes on. Still a lot of basketball left to be played, though. 15 points is nothing when you've still got 20 minutes at least. And almost 22 if you count what's left in this first half. McKnight will inbound to Lewis. Cook calls him over. Nice roll goes in. And he makes the basket. And suddenly the shocks do look that little bit more fired up. That'll be an and one chance for Nicholas Lewis. Was on Louis Sears. Louis makes the free throw. There's Gordon. He's going to drive at the basket. Nice pass to Laska. Laska didn't feel as if he could get up. Edwards will get up though. Yep, and rolls it in for two. Yep. Good pass from Sears. Yeah. Sheffield back up, 42, 28 down, back on offense. Then a cook battling inside with Justin Gordon. We have Nick Lewis, Nicholas Lewis. Or he's just Lewis. Eddie Matthew all over him, gives it back to Callum Jones. Callum Jones wide open for two, but doesn't make it. Drew Laska takes a long rebound. He gives it Eddie Matthew, but he, Eddie Matthew can't gather it in. Coach McLeod looks a little bit frustrated at that. I think there was a fast break on there straight away. Jones to McKnight. McKnight now is trying to set up a play. Took to the top of the key. Doesn't shoot the three. McKnight comes inside. Not a lot of space in there. Yep, stood on the line. Well spotted by director Les. <laughs> took that time out with 50.5 to go it was our second time out I'm probably more you might as well use it as, as not <laughs> um, the elite 42 to 28 and it's a fairly low res response from the, sh the Sharks as you said Dave they're just not making their shots are they well uh, first thing is there's the timeout going on here and obviously Rex is still sitting in the stands holding a, an ice pack so clearly that 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 bump has been more severe than than we thought I mean, outside of that, there's there's lots of things we could talk about about the Eagles. I'm particularly keen with this type of talent they've got to see them develop a little bit more of an inside-outside game. But when I looked at the scoreboard with two minutes to go and Sharks run 23, I could be forgiven for thinking it was the first quarter. I mean, it, you're just not competitive when you've only 23 points after 18 minutes of basketball. It's the so passive in offence. And at least now, Lillard's got them fired up a little bit. It seems to have spread to Mackay. But he's got to spread to the whole five. And that drive as well by Lewis just before was, was probably his best moment of the game as well. So Sheffield, you know, little points there that they need to just pick up on. and They're still in this game uh, as Eagles come up, bring the ball up. On offense, Laska, Matthew, 
Edwards. His first step's really quick. It's Gordon, that's a nice move. That's a nice move by Gordon, using speed, strength and agility. And again, Jeff, every one of the other players was alert to his move and moving and making it difficult for the Sharks to help out. It's going to be a foul on Justin Gordon, I think. Yep. Battling with Bennett Cook inside. This time, a little bit too aggressive. Foul given. Just Justin Gordon's second foul. 15.7 seconds left. Bennett Cook goes to the line. Coach McLeod thinks, well, it might only be 15.7, but we're on, could be on defence. Let's take Gordon out and put Jafo in. Yeah, sensible move. Bennett Cook with the line. Three or four so far tonight. Three or five now. Four of six. 44 29. Eagles with 13 seconds. Ball is over halfway. Inside the final 10 seconds. Edwards looking at the clock. Seeing if he can set something up, Darius the four comes out a long way, gives it to Laska. Laska for three on the buzzer and makes the three on the buzzer. What a great finish to the half five by the Newcastle Eagles. Couldn't, couldn't have written a better script, could you? Quick ball movement between two players. Sharks defence concentrates on those two players. One slip pass and uh, just nails it off just before that yellow light went and uh, drilled it home before the red light went off. Uh, clearly going into the half-time dressing room now at 47-29 and Tebow's got the harder job and I think it's on the mental side really rather than physical. They've shown, they've shown they know what the roles are, they can move the ball around. They've got talent, they just need to, to <laughs> want to put the ball in the basket more. And as you see, I saw both teams walking off there, Sharks definitely body language is, is down whereas the Eagles obviously with Laska hitting that three on the buzzer, bouncing almost into the change room. So Eagles lead 47-29 at the half. If you come back to us in about 12, 13 minutes, we'll give you some stats and a little bit more thoughts on, our, on the first half and what might happen in the second. Um, I couldn't hear you. All right. Yeah. I was just thinking the, the shooting percentage is, is probably the, the biggest one, which is like 50% against the 32%. Well, I think that 50% 50, 50 to 32, and I think you also said the Eagles had more assists than the, the, the Sharks, then that tells me all I need to know about this situation. This is not about exit canals. This is not about us talking about technical aspects of the games. The Sharks just need to really get into the defence intensity, and they have the people who want to put points on the board. Yeah, I mean... I feel really loud and you're quiet. I'm really loud. I'm picking up sounds from everyone. I can't hear Jeff. Sound from there and not here.
Yeah, we. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I've disappeared, but it's obviously I had problems with my, my headphone. That was a good move there from the Eagles. Also an equally good move by Rob Marsden. He just didn't finish it. That's what I want. He, he, he's going to be that wide open. He's got to threaten that defense because if then he can bring that defense onto him, he creates space for his teammates under the basket. I've watched him. I've watched him shoot, Jeff, from the free throw line. There's nothing wrong with the form on his shot. Now we might be able to hear us a bit better. You hear me better, Dave? Yep. Yeah. We've managed to work out what it was. And we hide nothing here at the Eagles. I was given the wrong headset back at half time. So, so apologies to everybody for that. But there, uh, 7.27 to go. Eagles lead 54 to 33. Nick Lewis going to the line to shoot two. Followed by Cortez Edwards. Makes the first one. This is the second. Justin Gordon seemed to know he was going to miss the second. It was almost in flight before the ball hit the but hit the rim. Now he drives in hard, flicks the ball out. Louis Sears in the corner for three. Well, I think we might be seeing that a few times this season, Dave. Night. Well, that's going to be a foul eventually given on Luis Sears. I think the I think the performance on the floor at the moment is as erratic as our <laughs> communication between each other. But it is good. I mean, Sharks are 57-34 down, but at least they look though they have a purpose about them in this quarter. Sears has knocked down two threes from the corner to give him a nice little boost, and he's obviously taking advantage of the fact that he's got those minutes with Flugram off. Maxwell takes that tough rebound, gives it to Fletcher. Fletcher at speed, flicks it out to Sears in the corner. Guess what? There's three again. That's three threes for Louis Sears in this quarter. Reliving that final at overtime against the, the London Lions where he banged down two quick threes, which turned the game in the Eagles' favour. He has Lewis to reply for three. He doesn't make it. Evan Maxwell takes the rebound, gives it to Fletcher. He gives it Edwards. Louis Sears is in the corner again, but this time it's Maxwell who's going to take the three, but he doesn't make it. Bennett Cook takes the rebound. Eagles leading 60-34 to 34 now. Here's McKnight. Bennett Cook didn't take the shot again. He's trying to twist and turn as well to get to the basket and lay it in. This is the, this is the Bennett Cook that the Sharks need to see. Wanting to be involved in the game, wanting to be a threat on the Eagles' basket. Makes it so much easier for his teammates because the Eagles have to go and help out on him. Yeah, Louis Sears getting a bit carried away. That, that, that three was rushed and not a good shot. Sheffield come away with the ball. 
Jordy Campbell thinks about three, but he doesn't shoot it. McKnight into Cook. Cook trying to work against Maxwell again. Just puts the shoulder down. Almost loses the handle, but doesn't. McKnight from way downtown. Doesn't make it. Bennett Cook, though, good rebound. Nick Lewis for three, and he makes the three. Well, the people who were actually in the arena for whatever and thought that was a blatant travel by uh, Cook, but I think it was actually, he, he only responded to a hard physical foul against him, so good, good and breathlessly, no call at all. Good play. There's Edwards for now for Eagles. Maxwell, he'll try and shoot the three, and makes the three. Evan Maxwell, and I think we're going to have a timeout from Sheffield. Sheffield have looked with more purpose, but the Eagles have suddenly started knocking down their threes, Dave. Yeah, it's a, a better, better sort of mental approach to the game from the Sharks. Hasn't really paid off in terms of the points, but at least they've wanted, shown they want to get into this game. And it's just been unfortunate the Eagles are knocking down shots at will. Rebounds, heading towards a double-double. Fletcher with six assists for Sheffield. Bennett Cook has got it at double figures. He's now got ten points and five rebounds. Nick Lewis has six points. Antoine Linard with five. And Bennett Cook actually now got up by another rebound. Six rebounds. Rob Morrison has four points, four rebounds. Mackie McKnight only with one assist so far in the game. Normally we see McKnight dishing out a lot more than that. Agreed, and, and obviously it was interesting to see that that line up there had three guards with Jordy Campbell and Nick Lewis and Matt Knight and the two, the two players we thought would step up and create some problems for the Eagles in Kipper Nichols and Antoine Lard being left on the bench. But yeah. here they come now, so, yeah, so maybe Ant they've got the message. Yeah, Antoine Lard and Kipper Nichols off the bench with Rob Marsden, Nick Lewis, Matty McKnight. For the Eagles, it's Fletcher, Edwards, Maxwell, Sears and Gordon. No changes so far in the court of the Eagles. We hit the halfway point. Lillard comes off the bench, shoots the three. Good rebound by Rob Marsden. A lovely reverse layup as well. Two points for Marsden. Edwards organising. Fletcher in the off-guard position. He'll come and get the ball off him, will he? No. Nope. Edwards, Sears into Gordon. Gordon twists, turns, finds Fletcher. Fletcher finds Maxwell underneath. Maxwell dunks it home for two more. Another assist for Fletcher. Another dunk for Evan Maxwell. McKnight with a long pass to Lewis in the corner. To Lewis as well to take it. And then bounces along the sideline and in off the glass. But at the other end, Fletcher finds Lewis Sears. The most animated person in the arena right now is Mark Wobakovic on the Sheffield bench. Louis Sears for three, doesn't go. That's going to be a foul. Our third foul on Kipper Nichols. He's certainly not enjoying his time in Newcastle so far. And that's too easy in for the Eagles that Fletcher into Gordon. Gordon drives in, lays it in off the glass. What's interesting from the Eagles' point of view, Jeff, is that uh, Justin Gordon's taking pretty much a low post position and allowing Maxwell to roam out and be more of a shooting threat. Working so far a little bit. 67 to 43. He has Lillard. Oh, that's a, I think we all heard that slap from up here. <laughs> Louis says on Lillard as he drove towards the basket. Well, for the sake of the game, we really need to get the Sharks right back into this game. And they're showing some signs that that's what their desire is. Not at the lane. Shoot the extra one. Makes it. Rattles it home. Back to within 21 of Eagles now. As George Justin Gordon plays the point forward. Oh, he spins. 
Oh, if that had got in, that would have been a real highlight piece. He spun and got Nichols upside down almost, but didn't make the three-point shot. There's a bit of a wild shot from Nick Lewis. Evan Maxwell takes the rebound. Here's Cortez Edwards flying up the other end for the Eagles. Didn't make the first one. Got the rebound, didn't make the second one. Coast to coast move from Edwards, just fails to make it. Here's Nichols against Gordon. Yep, offensive foul. Great positioning from Justin Gordon. Get my Nichols' fourth foul. That'll be disappointing for him. It'll be disappointing for the Sharks organisation as well. They would want to be seen more from their import player than they've seen tonight. Well, Morrison comes out as well, so better cook back on. Mike Tuck takes Kipper Nichols' place. I mean, Tuck playing this sort of role seems like a little bit of a transition for maybe the organisation and the player as well. Yeah, I think he's probably come off the bench for the last couple of two or three years now. And, you know, he's uh, obviously a big part of the Sharks organisation, not just on the court and off the court as well. Still got a lot to offer as a player from the bench. Edwards finds Gordon, Gordon up and bounce, and in it goes for two, and he's fouled as he takes the shot. Bennett Cook didn't think it was a foul, but he hasn't got the whistle in his mouth, so referee counts. That's a third foul for Bennett Cook. Well, you've got to assume the role here of the, of, of the uh, defensive coaching staff at Sheffield. From a defensive point of view, that was dreadful. He, walk, he literally cut in on it, on guarded nobody cut him off nobody bumped him caught the ball nobody closed down his shot whatsoever that was the easiest bucket of the night takes, takes Justin Gordon into double figures Eagles with four that start and five in double figures but obviously the one who isn't is Rex Fluger who's obviously got that injury when he the collision in the first quarter Justin Gordon's free throw doesn't go in Lewis comes away with it. Cook to McKnight. McKnight bouncing, flicks it out. He has Lillard. He's going to try and drive in on the Eagles. Good defense from the Eagles. Flicks it out. There's McKnight for three. When he makes that shot, he, he does make you wonder why he doesn't take it more often. Well, you know. Oh, at the other end, Justin Gordon doesn't make it. The Lord comes away with the rebound. I think he got caught in two minds there. He knew he could get to the hoop, but he also he knew he had a teammate in a better position cutting the basket than him. Well, that was unbelievable there. The, the position that Evan Maxwell took up allowed Bennett Cook to be completely open under the basket. But uh, fortunately for, for Maxwell, Cook didn't make the basket. Lewis for three. That one's just overcooked. Both Eagles go up, knock the ball dead. Antoine Lillard goes back to the Sheffield key and picks up his shoe. Justin Gordon sits down. Louis Sayers sits down. Darius DeFord, Eddie Matthew back on court. Strong pass from McNeish from the end line. Lillard's three is easily picked up. Doesn't make it an easy pick up by Darius DeFord. Fletcher now using Maxwell's screen. Maxwell will try the three. Maxwell misses the three. Eddie Matthew gone in for the rebound, doesn't get it. So Mackie McKnight is the one who cleans up. He's going to drive all the way at the basket and flicks it out to Lord for three. That hits the front of the rim and Evan Maxwell takes a rebound. Flicks it to Fletcher. Fletcher's away and running already. He gives it out to, Mac to Matthew. Matthew looking for a three, doesn't make it. Long rebound, Bennett Cook. He gives it back to McKnight. Bit of run and gun from both sides at the moment. 69-49 Eagles lead, and that's uh, Sheffield could almost have been back within, and could get the opportunity to go back within inside 20 points. Well, you have to think of this from Sheffield's point of view, the 20 down here, they've got to face the Eagles at home, and they've got a double to play against Leicester, I believe. Yeah. And the form Leicester in at the moment, and Sharks really need to turn the programme around very, very quickly. Cook makes the first. Also makes the second. We have 109 left in the third quarter. 
Cortez Edwards who picked up that second foul is coming out. Drew Lasker takes his place. Maxwell inbounds to Lasker. Lasker almost had it pinched by Lenard. Fletcher now over the halfway line, guarded by McKnight. To Maxwell swings it to Defoe. Now Fletcher thinking about going up for the three. Gives it to Matthew, Matthew gives it to Alaska in the corner. Alaska doesn't make the three. Lillard takes an easy rebound and looks like he's going to go coast to coast. Does go coast to coast and rolls the finger roll in for two points. Fletcher looks a bit disappointed in, I don't know if it's himself or the team, but uh, Sheffield now back within 16. Just showing a few signs of life here. Alaska into Defoe. Defoe back out to Fletcher. Fletcher up for three. Fletcher makes the three. It's one way to answer a Sheffield run. Warren Fletcher's for three, 72-53 inside the last 20 seconds. Sheffield hold for one shot, or will it go quicker? Will it go quicker because it's Nick Lewis. And he's, oh, yep, made it, didn't make it, didn't make it, didn't it, and eventually dropped. Yeah, got a lucky bounce. Keeping the eye on the scoreboard, looking a little bit better for the Sharks. Oh, wow! NBA range and some from Ramon Fletcher. He, he actually sort of lost the handle and gave it... To, to Darius Defoe, giving it back, and he was miles out and the time ticking out and threw the three up and in it went. And uh, that gives the Eagles back to a 20 point lead at 75 55 with 10 minutes to go. So, 10 minutes ago, Dave, 75-55, not quite, the fat lady hasn't quite started singing, but I think she's warming up. It looked at one stage as though the shark might get, but what is, the, the thing I think is letting them down the most, Jeff, is, so we, we say the Eagles attack down the right hand, let's call it a wing, no matter whether the sharks are in zone or man-to-man -man defence, they have to be aware of players cutting in from the weak side, time after time in that final few minutes of that quarter. The ball went in from the wing into the high post and caused Sharks all sorts of problems. They're not simply watching man and ball. They're just watching the ball. Once again, I'd like to give a big shout out to tonight's match sponsor, Dear Allen's School from Newcastle. Thank you very much for your support. And obviously, your main sponsor who sponsors the club, Give to Local. Great work in grassroots sports that they do. As we get underway in the fourth quarter, and Fletcher having decided to that he can shoot from anywhere, tries another long three, but this time he misses. Kipper Nichols takes the rebound, gives it to Lewis, and Sheffield on the offence with McKnight. Twists and turns, bounces inside, back out. Nice ball movement, in comes Rob Marsden. Throws the ball up, doesn't go in, but Mike Tuck does well to retrieve it. Marky McKnight for three. This one doesn't go in, but Rob Marsden gets the long rebound, gives it back to McKnight. 9.27 on the clock. Mike Knight, bounce pass in, wrap around bounce pass to Mike Tuck for three. Fletcher gets up nicely and just palms that rebound into the hands of Evan Maxwell and it's Eagles off and running again. Drew Lasker, oh, what a lovely pass from Fletcher, but to forward, just a little bit too much to do and Rob Morrison blocks him off. And here's Rob Morrison coming at the other end now. Kipper Nichols turns the corner, he's going to drive in. On Darius Defoe, and that's what you call an immovable object. Hit him square in the chest, foul called, Kipper Nichols fouled out. Fifth foul for Kipper Nichols. His, his work for tonight is over. Just the two points from the bench, four rebounds. 15 minutes, 37 and 5 fouls. Not the sort of return the Sharks oh. will be looking for from that player. What an awful pass that was from Drew Lasker. Very unlike him to throw a ball like that. 
and Antoine Lenoir took full advantage to slash it more down to the basket and slam it home. Lasker tried to make up for it, finds the four to four, turned down the shot. Justin Gordon up. Oh, wow, that was so short it was untrue. There again, that vulnerable part of the defence, ball into the high post area. Lewis driving hard, doesn't make it, but nice touch from Tuck, and in it goes. And I think Eagles are going to have a timeout and have a talk about it. The thing I was thinking about, Dave, just looking down the stats, I haven't not read it, obviously read the stats out, is, is Callum Jones has only played eight and a half minutes. You know, not really finding a role yet for him in the Sharks. No, I mean, I would have thought that uh, he would have been um, an obvious choice to rest uh, Mackey McKnight. Um, There's going to be a long, hard season from the Sharks if what we're seeing tonight is going to be the Sharks are going to to see for the season clearly um Kipper Nichols hasn't settled into the way basketball is being played over here yet Lillard is showing signs that he he might have things to to offer for them um the, the, their defense is just absolutely surrendering that high post area to the any player Eagles player who wants to cut in and good things for happening to for the Eagles when they get the ball into that position so four and in the centre position, Fletcher gives it to Edwards. Defoe comes to the top of the cave to set the screen. It's to Justin Gordon in the corner. Comes back out, goes back in. Brooks it out to Edwards. Edwards with one second left for the shot clock. Puts it up. Well, well short. Nick Lewis drive forward. Good break from, fast break from Sheffield as McKnight lays it in for two. Back to 14. Sheffield make somewhat of a comeback. Fletcher's wide open for three, though. Found five to four. And in it goes for three. A couple of times now, Sheffield have threatened a, a comeback. And Ramon Fletcher's come up with a three pointer. And that is going to be called for a foul this time as he tries to pinch the ball off Antoine Lord. He's Mr. McCauley from London, who will be in here on Friday night, would say, hands in the cookie jar. Yeah, big game, that one, isn't it, when you think about the way the results have gone and going? It looks at, you know, again, there's still a few, you know, a nice three from Nick Lewis on the nice catch and shoot as he came round the corner. It does look like as if, you know, Eagles and Lions could be playing for the second spot the way Leicester are playing at the moment. But obviously, a lot of games still to be played. Edwards... Bounces in, Fletcher for three, this one's short, Edwards will get the offensive rebound, shakes and bakes against Mike Tuck, Justin Gordon leaning in and Mike Tuck's got his hand up as he hears a whistle, foul called, Justin Gordon goes to line to shoot two. Thing about this group as well, Dave, is, is you know obviously points difference could come into it because I'm, I'm sure Ian McLeod would be thinking about some of the younger players. He might still use them, of course, especially with the game coming up again on Friday. Well, the way I see this one, Jeff, at the moment, with seven minutes to go, if the Sharks, with about five minutes to go, were to get this down to sort of a ten-point game, I would give them a chance. Justin Gordon misses both the free throws. Not his Twice they've got it back to game. 14, haven't they? Twice they've got it to 14. That's a big travel from Nick Lewis. He felt he was fouled, but... He's having another word with Paul Unsworth, but... Well, Nick, there's no point... Sorry, Mr Lewis. There's no... <laughs> Nicholas, there's no point at all. You've lost the ball. It was a travel. Fletcher bounces that ball off. Nick Lewis... Well, Nicholas Lewis, I'll get used to it one day. I think McLeod's instinct were good when he called that last time out because he probably felt 
the way I'm feeling is that the Sharks have some sort of chance here. Yes, to Gordon. Gordon brings the Lord out. Fletcher goes driving in. Lord's not getting his feet set. Easy foul to be called. That's yeah, that, put, that puts Lillard. him one point off the penalty as well. One to, just only one to give. And also four fouls for the Lord. Justin Gordon rolls the ball in. Two points, 80 to 64. Gordon up to 15 personal. McKnight with a long pass to Lewis. Lewis, three goes driving into. Oh, called on. That's an interesting sub. So not, not the guy you said, uh, you know, had only had eight minutes. He's coming. I think he. That's justified. I'm surprised he's taken Lillard out. He's on four fouls. Ah, okay, there you go. So it's uh, Callum Jones has come on for Antoine Lillard. A oh, nice take by Bennett yeah. Cook. Really nice take from Nick Lewis's pass. There is, of course, a, a, an opposite hypothesis to that. But when you're this far down and only six minutes to go, one of your better potential scorers is no good to you on the bench. Yep. That's a really good point. <laughs> Fletcher brings the ball up. Shocks received a warning for touching the ball after it's gone through the basket. Strong move from Justin Gordon, but he, he can't. This Louis Sears from the corner doesn't make Justin Gordon strong move, but he couldn't get the layup in. But he managed to get the offensive rebound and pass yeah. the ball out to Sears, but he couldn't knock down the three. Louis Sears Sharks need to convert in this offense 14 points. Good hands from Cortez Edwards, not the ball was out. So, what have they got on the clock? 5.32. Eight, is go. it eight seconds? Eight seconds it's, left yeah. on the shot clock. Coming up to that five minute mark, I just sense this is a big, this is next two minutes of big moments with the Sharks. Justin Gordon comes out, Evan Maxwell goes back in, Martin McKnight driving in, bouncing, driving to the basket, can't make it. Evan Maxwell takes a rebound, that'll be his 11th rebound of the night to go with 14 points. He has a double double. And then goes in at the other end, doesn't make the make the basket. Lots of shouts from those who can are allowed in, in, in here. Louis Sears knocks that ball out of the hands of Bennett Cook. And oh. So knocked the ball out of the hands of Bennett Cook and we got the ball to Fletcher who found Edwards. Edwards on the break and was fouled. And that's been called an unsportsmanlike foul on Nick Lewis. So I think there'll be two shots and a bonus for Cortez Edwards. Makes the first. Makes the second. And now a ten lane ball for the Eagles. The Lions discussing the finer points of the game with referee Josh Boat. Louis Sayre steps out of court. <laughs> he's asking how he stepped out of court. Well, I thought he was looking at the ball and the referee was looking at the line, so that's why he stepped out of court. <laughs> Callum Jones, Perry Cook driving hard, and that's going to be a foul on Evan Maxwell, I think. Yep. Two shots to Perry Cook. Seems to up and down better. Isn't it? One moment he's very aggressive, has, and the next moment he's passive. To, we said this about him last year as well. He has to be more consistent. He clearly, he has, clearly the talent. Yeah, has the talent. He has the know how as well. Makes the first. 
Takes him up to 15 personal. He also has eight rebounds. Makes a second. So levels, joint level top scorer with Nicholas Lewis. 16 points each for the for the Sharks. 450 to go. Eagles lead 82 to 68. Edwards turns, twists. Oh, that's a lovely move from Edwards. So you see to turn into trouble almost, but managed to get enough space just to lay it up with his left hand and in for two points. Better cook. McKnight out in the corner. Marsden inside. He lays it up for two. Terrific move from Ron Barnes and great footwork. But again, it's, it's something which, when you see him do that, you think, well, why does he do it more often? But, uh, <laughs> Anton Leod comes back on, Nicholas Lewis goes off, Justin Gordon comes on, Darius Defoe goes off. Quiet night for Darius. But again, don't forget the Eagles go again on Friday at home against London Lions. Another game you can stream if you want to watch. Evan Maxwell shot short. Cortez Edwards getting up again for the rebound. That's an Eagles ball. Knocked, knocked dead by Antoine Lenard. And Callum Jones is also there. <laughs> Once again. But <laughs> Just, I just turned to have a look at Davis. Uh, it was going to, uh, and his face said it all. Fletcher into Maxwell. Maxwell off the glass. Far too easy. No, no shot within any side of it. He has Cook again going to the free throw line, and no eagle picking him up, and he knocks that one down. Fletcher. Two more points for the Eagles. Antoine Lenard. Oh. No basket, foul on the floor, and a foul's going to be called on Evan Maxwell. Nick Lewis comes back on. Callum, Callum Jones goes off. Just a chance to mention that this Sunday, the Eagles ladies team is at home against Manchester Mystics with a 5.30 p.m. tip-off. Dave and I will be bringing you commentary from that one as well. It'll be first for, for, for me. And uh, look, very much looking forward to That's this Sunday, WVBL game versus Manchester Man Mystics, 5.30 p.m. tip-off. You check out on the Eagles website for details of how to get on the streaming for that one. Fletcher for three at the other end. So I guess I'm the experienced one here because I've done one ladies game before. Right. About two years ago I did uh, <laughs> Sheffield Hatters v the Nottingham Wildcats. Well, I'm really looking forward to the game. It's something which I've promised myself a few times that I should do more of, go watch the, the ladies' games. If you do put it in very entertaining basketball. Um, so I'm looking forward to that one. Meanwhile, this one, sorry, back to this one, 2.30 to go. Fletcher's behind the back pass isn't picked up by Justin Gordon. Eagles lead 91-75. to 75. Ramon Fletcher leading all scorers with 25 points. He's four of six from three-point range. And he's also got 11 assists, so another superb double-double from R Ramon Fletcher. I think uh, Nick Lewis thought that shot was, was easily deflected. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't called by Paul Unsworth, but Josh Bowe has gone over, discussed it with him, and... And uh, that is now a Sheffield end line ball, and I think that's by a long way the right decision. 2.17 to go. Nice drive by Anton Lillard all the way at the basket, lady. There's no doubt about this. Some, there's some talent in the Sheffield side. They just need yeah. to really sort out the, the team playing, particularly their defensive play. And then uh, they could well be a side to be reckoned with as time goes on. He has Maxwell though for three. 
And we've already said he can't leave he, Evan Maxwell no, free. He's, he's really comfortable. He's, he's more comfortable facing the basket and playing like that than he is with his back to the basket. He's up to 21 points and he has 11 rebounds as well. He has Lillard turning, spinning, gets the ball over the top and in for two. So he's just trading baskets here. 143 to go. Eagles lead 94 to 79. Fletcher's evaluation is going through the roof at the moment. Goodness knows where he came from there, but he missed the shot. That'll bring his valuation down a little bit. Nice pass from Lewis into Bennett Cook, and Bennett Cook gets that one in. Sheffield up to 81 points, 13 points behind. Oh, an easy steal that was very casual for Cortez Edwards. Matty McKnight lays it in. I think Ian McLeod wants to just remind his players that we've still got a, bit, a little bit of game to play here. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's been it, it, probably more comfortable than this score suggests, but McLeod will be a little bit concerned about uh, the relaxation in certain parts of the Eagles game in this final quarter to allow Sharks back into it. But the real work that's got to be done in this group, uh, Jeff, is in, is in the Sharks. Yeah. No question about it. They've got work to be done. They've got two tough games against Leicester and they've got the Eagles to come to their home court as well. So at the moment, they're the ones who are most likely, unless they can have a quick change around in fortunes, most likely to be the best candidate for the one to be eliminated from this group. And naturally, McLeod will want, know, knowing that he's got a game against Leicester and London coming up, as well as a trip down to the Sharks, will be quite right to nail into his players, you know, the little things he's not happy with. See if you could take better cool yeah on. I mean I, I would be saying to him watch this game Benny see the way you play in the first half and compare it to the way you play in the second half that the way you play in the second half is what we want from you yeah. just um, 113 to go 94 to 83 Eagles obviously being reminded that points difference could matter in this group pretty much the starting five out there Obviously, Rex Luger injured. It's going to be a foul on Nick Lewis. Sheffield in the penalty, so Evan Maxwell go at the line to shoot two. He has 21 points and 11 rebounds. Another efficient performance by the big fella. Three or five from three point range as well. But misses the free throw. Makes the second, takes him to 22 personal, gives the Eagles a 95 to 83 lead. McKnight with a long pass to Lillard, who's coming in, works hard. Good defense that time by Evan Maxwell. Altered the shot, and uh, when it missed, he was there to grab the rebound. So inside the last minute, as Fletcher brings the ball forward, gives it to Gordon, he lays it off to Edwards. Fletcher thinks about the three, then thinks about driving round. Ball inside to Maxwell, but he can't take it, and neither can Cortez Edwards and, Ant and Anton Lillard, Lillard. Even at the other end, he can't take it and had enough of the ball, though, just to put the extra step in and walk. 29.1 seconds to go. Eagles lead 95 to 83. And we're back here on Friday night, don't forget when London Lions are in town looking forward to that one that should be a really tough big game for, for both sides um, as they try to sort out the group positions certainly the Eagles you know improved their position late oh that's a big big walk by Evan Maxwell yeah, pity because it was a nice nice uh, nice series of play so 12.4 left on the clock Atiba Lions calls another timeout and uh, presumably he's going to advance the ball and try and get his team to... If they, if they can knock down a three here, they would be within nine points.
it's been a, not a good game for Kipper Nichols. Um, Lillard, you know, some things I like about him, he's quick, he's got great, he's really aggressive footwork when he t goes trying to get to the basket, he just needs to be better at finishing. Got a lot of work to do in the Sharks camp. We'll take a lot of heart, though, I think, from this second half performance. They only lost the first third quarter by two points, and they're winning this one by eight. So they have showed a little bit, but, you know, um, in that, that's what probably what the Tiva Lions will be looking at as much as comparing the first half against the second half. And they have shown that bit, a lot more aggression. Just having a quick look at the scores, Ramon Fletcher, 25 points, 12 assists for the Eagles. Max, Evan Maxwell, 22 points, 12 rebounds. Uh, Cortez Edwards, 16 points, 7 assists, 5 rebounds. Justin Gordon, 15 points and 4 rebounds. And Louis Sears, 9 points. And for Sheffield, Bennett Cook has 12 points and 9 rebounds. Anton Lord, 19 points. And Nick Lewis, 16 points. And Sheffield come forward. The Lord, it lays the two points in. That's the way that guy plays best. Long pass forward. That's going to be a foul by Mackie McKnight. 5.6 left on the clock. So we see us with two shots. 5.6 left on the clock. That takes him into double figures. One of the quieter silence, I think, by the Eagles, but certainly showing his worth tonight with Rex Fluger being out. Up to 11 points personal. Atiba Lyons takes another timeout. Friday, Tuesday, Friday, Sunday. Yeah, busy week for us. Might have to take Monday off work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually off on Friday, so never mind. Yeah. Um, I'll take every Monday off work. <laughs> yes, well, <laughs> hopefully in a year or so, time to have, I may well be joining you in those ranks. So i just have a quick quick look at the, the scorers for you, for again, just to run, run down them for you. Um, at that, those two points that Antoine Lillard just scored takes him to Sheffield's top scorer with 21 points. Bennett Cook, 20 points and 12 re uh, 9 rebounds. Nick Lewis, 16 points, 7 rebounds, 6 assists. And Marky McKnight with 8 points, 7 rebounds. Sheffield advance the ball again. Callum Jones will inbound it. They'll be looking for probably a 3-point shot. 3 seconds left, 2 seconds. The Lord tries to drive all the way in the basket. Does drive all the way in the basket. And lays it in for two to finish the game. And that finishes the game with the Eagles winning it by 97 to 87. Takes Antoine Lillard up to 23 points. Big quarter for Sheffield, that one. Won, won that one by 32 points to 22. Um, but I'm sure at the end of the day, it's the win that was more important to Ian McLeod and his men. And they certainly deserve the win, Dave. Um, and Sheffield with a much better second half performance. That they can probably take that away. I think we're all now looking forward to this. I think Friday's going to be a really big game. I think London will, will be stung by the fact that the loss to the Eagles at home gave up a good position, allowed the Eagles to go and completely dominate over time. And obviously, there'll be uh, a lot of talk in that camp about how they lost by 21 points to, to the Leicester Riders. So that one's Friday night at 7.30 p.m. And just a final thank you to DM Allen School for sponsoring tonight's game. Um, which is finished at e Newcastle Eagles 97, Sheffield Sharks 87. So until Friday night, that's very much thank you for, for watching, thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed it and see you on Friday. <laughs>